Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, bathroom exhaust fans. I don't like how they look cheap and how they sound cheap. So with a simple upgrade, we're going to make the house sound so much better. So what tools do you need to swap out the exhaust fan? Well, first you're going to need a new exhaust fan and then you're going to need a ladder so you can reach the exhaust fan. You might need a drill to drill the pilot holes in the exhaust fan housing. You will need a screwdriver, both electric and manual. You might need a pry bar to take out the old housing. You'll need a box cutter to cut off the template off the housing box. And you'll need a marker, not only to mark the ceiling, mark around the edge, but I also marked mine so I knew where the wire box was, the vent, and also where the stud needs to be. Once you've cut that hole and you mounted the box, you might need to caulk around it. You'll need this uh, metal tape to go from the uh, exhaust blower into the actual piping. And I use this and I put this, once I find the electrical panel uh, breaker, I put this on the electrical panel so that nobody opens it and gives me a nice little shock. You'll need, at least I like to use, an oscillating tool to cut the sheetrock up top. You might need some wire cutters, electrical tape. Of course, you will need wire nuts, but there should be some up there. And lastly, you'll need uh, screws. Now you want screws that aren't too long, that they go through the stud fully, because there might be wiring or something else stapled onto the other side. But you'll need those to hold up the housing, okay? Now, when you get the housing, the motor will already be in it and you'll wanna pull that out. It's very easy, follow the instructions. And speaking of instructions, make sure you read the instructions first and watch my YouTube before you tackle it because then you'll know to use your shop vac when you're cutting the sheetrock to suck up the the, the dust and make less, like less of a mess. So give me a moment and we'll get started. All right, so one of the other things that I meant to tell you is the exhaust drain that it has an up and a down. So you wanna make sure you have the up and down properly when you hook that up. But we'll get to that later. So the first thing you do Drop this off by squeezing the pins. I already turned off the power so we don't have to worry about that. You unplug this and then you'll see two screws. You'll unscrew those. Actually, it's just one screw. Looks like you need a regular tip screwdriver too, so you can pry that out. So let me get that and I'll get this piece off. Another fun fact, when you turn off the power to this, it might cut all your outlets off. So have an extension cord ready. That'll make your life a lot easier. Once we have that out, you can tell John if he wants this, I'll let you know and you get it over to him. And you want to see, there's the exhaust. I'm looking for the side the stud is on right now. And I kind of think it's on this side. So we're going to press on and get the, the wiring out of the way too. Thank you. 
So what I'm doing is I'm feeling around with the screwdriver so I can see where the stud is. And it's definitely right there. So I'll know this is my mounting point. And it's a lot easier to remove the box once you've done your mounting plate. So I'm gonna simply take my box here, and I've already labeled where the stud goes. So I'm gonna do just, just like that. And we'll mark it. Now, most people would use a pencil, but I'm pretty sure of myself. So, that's why I'm using Sharpie. All right. This is going to make a lot of noise. So, I'm going to not film this. But in essence, I'm going to take this along with the hose. And I'm going to cut along the line as I keep the shop back on it. So once I get that cut, we'll come right back to you. All right, as you can see, I've cut it. And now I'm just getting it out of the way. And there'll be some insulation that falls through, but I gotta let you know, I have uh, since replaced the insulation with um, foam. And I, I guarantee you that foam is the way to go. If you got uh, the expense to do it, it will definitely save you money in the long haul. But I'm telling you, our electric bills went way, way down once we put that foam insulation in. So, well worth the money. All right, so I was very careful not to cut the wiring or the exhaust here. And what's really good to know is that was going nowhere. There really is no pipe there. So that's going to be fun to find out what happened to the pipe. Wow. That's not good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get this off and uh, get this out of here. And I'll be back with you once I get that done because this is just messy, boring stuff that you don't really need to say. But I can feel there's a screw right here, and there's a screw right here, so this might be easier to get out than I thought. So, yay. Uh, where's my screwdriver? Here it is. the angle is just not right for it but that's what the pry bar is for You gotta remember these things are put up before the sheetrock is put up, so not always there to as easy as you think to get them off. But that's why you use pry bars and whatnot. You just gotta be careful not to damage anything. But usually if you get it right in there, you pop that screw up.
think about it, I should have told you to put a mask on. This is always the hardest part. Once you get past this, it's smooth sailing. All right, this is gonna require some camera time. So again, I'm gonna turn off the video to keep the noise levels down. All right, so during the downtime, I ran a new exhaust line uh, because there wasn't one there. One of the things you have to watch for is also the size of the exhaust line. So this, was the size before and this is the size now so you can see it's a lot bigger you want to make sure you get the right size or an adapter and then there's an up and down on this and you want to make sure that's handled too so now I'm gonna go ahead and feed the electric and the, the tubing and just make my life easy here so I've already drive fitted this to make sure it's gonna fit and of course, the power's still off. Um, what I'm gonna do is wire up this down, the electric in, uh, but I'll do that later. I'm just gonna show you kind of how to get all this together. drilled out the holes so that the screws would go in and now I'm just gonna screw it in good and tight and uh, it calls for two screws but I'm gonna put in three just because I like over time. I don't like rattles. And again, I made sure the screws were not too long so that they would not screw through to the other side. And now I'm going to get my air vent tube here. Again, this has an up and a down. You want to make sure you get it in there properly. And you'll know it because it says up. have your tape in your hand ready to go so that you're good and what I like to do is just go around a couple of times so that this way I know how much tape I actually need to make my life easier and if you pre-peel a piece then it's a lot easier then you just stick it there so it stays up you know what side is up this side okay tape all around and get a nice good seal on it. And that's not going anywhere. It's a nice good seal. Now in Florida we have a problem with bugs. 
roaches especially, they all like glue. So you want to make sure the glue is not exposed. And then it just simply goes on in. snaps that from the top. Once the top's in, the one side goes in and then you just have to put one of those little screws in for the other side. I don't know if I can get my driver in there. But if not, then yeah, you can get that in there. Okay. And that holds that piece nice and tight. Now you just finish the wiring, which this, this fan that I'm putting in has a light as well. So you're gonna have two pairs of wires. So you put green with green and that's gonna be your ground. And then you black with black. And that also goes with the black. And then white with white. And then you just wire nut them all. And I like to put a piece of tape on it and then you shove that in there. So while I'm doing all that, I'm going to pause and then we'll be right back. One thing I forgot to mention is that this fan does have a light. So that's why I had two pairs of wires. One's for the light and one's for the fan. So you can certainly um, wire them together like I did in this one or have separate wires one for the fan, one for the light kit, and run them independently. So this is the fan. And since I've got the power off, I thought I'd give it a quick check to make sure everything's working right. It's almost in there, right? But it's in there enough for me to give it a quick bump on the power to see if it's all working. Nice and quiet. And I'm going to check the light as well <laughs> to make sure it's working. Yep, everything's working, so we can finish buttoning it up. So I'm going to button it up, and I'll be right back. All right, so remember, I said read the instructions. Well, I should take my own advice, because there's little brackets that have to go up before you put the fan in. So, and they go right there. And there's no way to put these uh, in if the fan blade is in there. So read the instructions before you button everything down and you should have no issues. And there's one on this side and there's one on the other side. And that holds the light fixture in place. So I just wanted to tell you that and show you that, you know, we all make mistakes. And uh, it's okay, don't let it upset you. Deal with it and move on. Very simple fix. Take the fan out if you put it in and do it over. There we go. And now we can put the fan back in. We'll put the light bracket on. We'll be good to go again. So, 
And when you're putting this in, there's wires on this side. Just gotta tuck them in. No big deal. The only big part of it is that it does clip the this little piece right here. There's a little catch for it in there to help hold it in place. What I'm gonna do is finish screwing it up, then this plate goes on using the two little uh, brackets I just mounted. Screws up right like this. And we button it up. So I'll be back when I finish and ready to do that and show you the finished product. Okay, it's all done, buttoned up. Let's see how it works. much quieter looks so much better and it just adds extra light to the bed bathroom I turned off the bathroom lights which are neat so there you have it folks real easy no problems need any help let me know